then again, I... Well, the EPA is probably one of the most powerful agencies in the United States. I mean, if you look at what they do to us here in Alaska, I mean, why do we have all this hubbub and gnashing of teeth over our PM 2.5 particulates here in the borough? The borough didn't come up with that on their own. It was the EPA mandating what we will do here. Um, look at the Healy coal mine. Why don't we have that gen power generator down there fired up, giving us cheaper power so we can afford to live here in Fairbanks? Well, the EPA says, nope, not going to use it, even though our state said that we could. Our state helped build it because we can't use coal, even though the federal government has a military base right here in this town where they burn coal all day long. Do people forget that? Every day you can look out your window towards Fort Wainwright and see the coal plant over there producing power for Fort Wainwright. Why can't we produce power right here in Fair, well, in Healy for us in Fairbanks? Because the EPA says, nope. Why? What gives them the right to do that? We're free citizens of the state of Alaska. If we want to have power generated by the Healy coal plant, then we should go down there and have power generated by the Healy coal plant. Well, we don't have anyone in the state government what with the cojones to tell the see, EPA that ex exactly. to get lost, and we're going to take care of our own state what? because you guys are going down the toilet. You're going to be bankrupt at any time now. And we're going to keep this state solvent because we are solvent. And guess what? I guarantee the federal government will someday demand that Alaska turn over the money that it has saved up. You think that the federal government, who is bankrupt, by the way, it's not like they might be bankrupt. They are. They yeah. are bankrupt. They live in debt. That means you're bankrupt. The only thing that they have is they can print more debt. They're never solvent. They will never be solvent. Do you think that they'll let that money sit in Alaska's coffers when, well, you're part of the union. That's our money. You're going to give it to us. They will someday mm -hmm. until someone in the state government, local government, borough government stands up to them and says, we have a duty to our citizens in this state, and we will follow that duty to the citizens in our state. Get out of here. But in, but in, but if we have exactly the opposite, we have our elected officials at every level, including at the borough, the most local level here, saying, "Oh no, because you people that live here in the Fairbanks Northshore Borough, we must submit to the EPA's demands on every issue, including the air quality issue, and and we we must not allow you to burn wood in an improper manner because you know what, if if we don't do that, then we're going to lose our federal money." That would be wonderful. We're going to lose our federal monies, you guys. We Steve, can't do if that. we don't compromise, then we'll have anarchy and everybody's going to kill everybody else. Don't <laughs> you know this? <laughs> well, uh, God forbid that we not have anarchy. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Tim again. I, got, I had two other items I wanted to bring up to you guys. Oh, you got stuck in the news. Go ahead, Tim. Um, uh, Steve, I know you were in the Army. Uh, were the other two gentlemen in the Army or in the military? No. So, Steve is familiar with when that he swore to uphold and protect the Constitution. And our military uh, members, when they do that, they immediately give up the, cost, the same constitutional rights that they swore to protect. Do you agree, Steve? I, mean, you know, I was told when I joined the Army that I had given up my constitutional rights for the time that I was in the Army. That, that's correct. That, I, I that's was, what I meant. I was told that time and again. For instance, when you drive on a base, you're subject to what would be an illegal search any other place. At any time, they can pull you over and search. But anyway, that's one subject that you could maybe... That, that goes for anybody that goes on base. I got searched yesterday. That, that's correct. That's correct. But uh, the military guys are... Uh, they can... They, they don't have any uh, any right to privacy or anything like that. So they can be. Anyway, the other thing was, uh, oh, the, and your the Healy Coal plant. Uh, that could have been on. That's not an EPA. If, today it may be an EPA function, but if you want to blame, point fingers, you can start with the uh, GVA board. If you you got to go back to when it was first put online, when they did the test run, and it could have been up and running then. So and that was not up and running because of the EPA. Oh, there was some, one other thing. Uh, what was it? Oh, do you guys are aware of what happened on June 8, 1967? 
No. It was before I was born. <laughs> uh, I bet you can Google it. I bet I could. The USS Liberty. Maybe that, you. Maybe oh, that you was could. the the one in uh, that was hit off by by Israel. Yeah, there you go. You're yep. Okay, so that was a, that was a, a U.S. intelligence uh, intelligence gathering ship that was uh, mistakenly fired upon by Israeli forces and sunk. But you're, you're aware that uh, they have the admirals that were on the line with Johnson and McNamara at the time, and Johnson said, "Let the damn thing sink." I wasn't aware of that. Uh, well, it could be could that's, be internet bunk, but that's the way I read it actually. The uh, the guys that were on the ship are now out speaking about it becoming more outspoken because they were ordered you know you don't talk about this anyway uh that's another one of those items that we seem to overlook uh recently when uh our current commander-in-chief said something about israel everybody jumped up on him all about that but israel hasn't always been the, that good a friend to the u.s uh anyway that's all i got all right thanks very much appreciate the phone call i just want to go back to the, the coal mine i don't I wasn't around when the uh, first go around with GVA or whatever, why it didn't get fired up. All I know is right now our power bills are astronomical. Our fuel surcharge, for some reason, is higher than the actual bill is, and we have a perfectly good power plant sitting idle, which seems to be the norm nowadays, and it could be fired up quite easily, and we could get a little bit cheaper power. What is wrong with that? The oil companies wouldn't make any money off that, dude. <laughs> it's not all about money. It's not all about oil. Uh, I think an awful lot of it, it, it is about power, though. And if you look at locally, uh, it, the, the more people that are dependent on getting their, their heating fuel from uh, the the oil companies or, or not even the oil companies, the local distributors. I mean, I mean, I think that the more freedom that people have, the more choices people have, the better it's going to be. Competition is good in the marketplace and, and because it drives prices down and brings quality up. It's not, it's not just good for the consumer, though. It's also good for the people that are competing because you have to come up with a better mousetrap. And, and that, to me, I think that would apply to the power-making issue, too. It would have to. It, it just it stands to reason that if we had coal-fired plants and we had wind generators and the dam down at Susitna and we had all those other opportunities for power being made, people would choose what made the most sense to them, wouldn't they? Well, I would choose the one that's sitting there doing nothing right now. I mean, right off the bat. I believe they have $150 million invested into that thing, and the EPA is requiring them to do an additional $50 million worth of upgrades before they'll let them open it, and they know that's not feasible. They don't have the money. It'll never happen as far as the... I mean, the EPA is never going to... They are... Until someone stands up to them. And why in the world can't we just have one of our state representatives, our governor, someone local... I mean, you know how much I would love to say something really good about one of them? I would just stand behind and say, here's our man, here's our gal, they're going for it, let's back them up, let's back them up. No one will do it. Do they think that the people out here won't back them? I mean, are they more afraid of the EPA? Well, obviously, they're more afraid of the EPA yeah. than they are of their own Well, citizens. I think they're more afraid of losing the federal monies. I, I think, I mean, the only justification I have ever heard for standing up against the EPA has been we'd lose the federal money. Because the people always go, oh, well, we don't want that. Right. It's well, an we, easy, so it's an easy out. I mean, the basic point is, though, they won't stand up to them because they're scared. And, and, and why? This is what I don't understand. Let's just say, let us uh, paint a picture in your mind for just a moment. What would happen if the governor of the state said, I hereby authorize GVEA to move ahead with this power plant. In fact, I order it. We need to bring down the, pri the, the price of energy for all of Alaskans. Move ahead. Fire up that whole plant. Do it now. Furthermore, I am hereby authorizing the oil companies to go into ANWR, which, yes, I know it is so-called federal land, but you know what? It's within the borders of Alaska, and I believe the people of Alaska ought to be able to get to our oil that is underneath ANWR, and therefore I'm sending in the oil companies right now by order of Alaska. What would the feds do? Would they send in the troops to stop us? No. They'd freak out at first, of course. It'd be a bit all over the news. And they'd talk about how the governor was... Alaska's a going rogue! <laughs> but, but what could they do? Yeah. What could they do? You think they'd 
okay, Wainwright, saddle up. You're going to go take these guys out. Where? In your backyard. That wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. no, I don't, th I don't think it saying. would either. I would just love someone to stand up and do what's right for once. Just once. I mean, at least we have Sharon Cisna, a Democrat, for all you Republicans out there that hate him. She's at least standing up to the TSA, EPA, the, TSA uh -huh. at least the best that she can right now, trying to get people to back her up and make something happen. And how much, how much, uh, how many other politicians see jumping up and down on her bandwagon with her? And 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 None. again, that's an excellent point there. When you you mentioned the fact that she's a Democrat, here's a great opportunity for you Republicans to get your base behind you. You want to call them your base. Get out there and support CISNA and demand that the TSA get out of Alaska. The problem the Republicans have with that is that the Republicans are the ones that passed the Patriot oh, Act, which that's authorized right. and created oh, the TSA. If we right. didn't have those in place, we wouldn't be able to spread democracy around the world. Which, that's what our Constitution calls for, right? Of course it The does. chief purpose of America is to export democracy around the world? Oh, no, it you doesn't. need to show me which one you're reading. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's the one I'm making up. As, oh, that's the one the Republicans told me it was. All right, stay with us here. It's time for another uh, quick message from our sponsors. This time around, uh, Bighorn Enterprises for all of your trucking and construction needs. Give them a call at 451-7310. Now, what does that mean for all of your trucking and construction needs? And let me tell you what they do. Uh, the whole company started with a couple of guys who owned a truck. Owner operators hauling some freight from here to there. Now, I got a couple of sweet gigs where they were hauling for uh, Exxon and they decided to expand, added a few more trucks. Then they got some better jobs. And the thing is, is that every single job that they completed, they completed on time. Uh, and not only that, they completed they, they completed it for the price that they agreed upon. There's none of this uh, halfway through the project, oh, I'm afraid it's going to cost us a little bit more to finish. And no, that's not the way they work. You know, with their Bighorn Enterprises, it's all about honesty and integrity. They treat their customers like they want to be treated. I think I've heard something like that before. What's it called? The Golden Rule or something? Anyway, it's not brain science. It's construction and trucking and the whole point is that it if you want to be treated like somebody who deserves respect if you want to have a job completed on time if you want it to be completed for the price agreed upon then call locally owned bighorn enterprises 451-7310 one of our proud sponsors here at patriots lament and uh, we've got all four lines on hold now gentlemen so uh, you ready to go back to the phones yeah. Four five eight. Talk the number. Good morning, caller. This is Problem Corner. Who's this? This is Charles. Sorry, sorry, Charles. Patriots lament. Go ahead. <laughs> it should be uh, citizens demur instead of the lament. I, I think a demur may be a better term. Speaking of words, uh, are you suggesting we use democracy to open the coal plant? No, I'm suggesting free market system open the coal plant. <laughs> okay. It, the contradiction in terms is always uh, there, it seems. Uh, uh, democracy began as a meaning of the people tell the government what to do, and voting is just no part of what I see as a, the word democracy. But people infer that, and that's the way it's uh, taught. Democracy isn't necessarily voting. 